Do I really have to do pedantic historian voice? That's what you want to do? Look, I already went to all the effort to download the fancy font, so you're doing the voice. <sighs> Welcome back, Deep Year View TV friends. I am your host, Chris Nichols. Please join me for an installment of Great Moments in EVF History, where we explore our personal favorite milestones in the wonderful world of the electronic viewfinder. It has changed our world, it has evolved our photographic art, and today we will explore a few gems. We begin our journey in the photographic dark ages, a time when EVFs were met with suspicion, disdain as objects of witchcraft to be drowned in lakes. And this was due to field sequential displays, large lag times that destroyed any sense of reality, and very poor grainy resolution. So the first EVF that I want to start with today was a real breath of fresh air. It was the Fuji X100's hybrid EVF. This gave the photographer the option to choose a real optical viewfinder or a very usable EVF. It was novel and it drew people into the world of the electronic viewfinder finder without all of the kicking and screaming. And so we come to the year 2014, a very good year in the world of EVFs. People were enjoying the electronic viewfinder and larger cameras and the instant feedback that it provided. However, compact camera users were still left in the dark. That is until the Sony RX100 version 3. This camera championed an ultra compact OLED EVF built into the body that could give the user the ability to have a pocket sized camera that they could bring up to the eye. Wonderful for both photo and and video applications. Now Fujifilm again was a pioneering company because earlier in 2014 they debuted the X-T1 and this had at the time a remarkable EVF. 0.77 magnification factor, the largest at the time, 2.36 million dots. This was remarkable because it was the first EVF that the majority of photographers could agree was the first that was capable of replacing an optical viewfinder on an SLR. And finding photographers agreeing on something is about as rare as a kind word in a sample gallery. A true achievement. Now, did I not mention that 2014 was a wonderful year for the EVF? Towards the end of it, Samsung released their brilliant and much missed NX1. Now, of course, Samsung, a company well versed in the art of the electronic display, brought a beautiful AMOLED viewfinder to this camera. However, what really stood out for us was actually the graphic user interface. The way that Samsung made use of the space in the monitor to display all of the information pertinent to the photographer, as well as something very easy to use, customize, and adjust. It was absolutely brilliant, and I think I speak for all of us when I say that we miss that NX1 very much. Now our next EVF of honorable mention belongs to the insanely expensive and very heavy Leica SL. Now at a time when the manufacturers were pushing the boundaries of resolutions to 3.76 million dots in their EVFs, Leica decided to figuratively leapfrog that amount right to 4.4 million dots. This was a truly high magnification and stunning viewfinder. Combined with their Leica optics, Leica claimed that this viewfinder was beyond the human human eye's ability to even appreciate. Absolute horse of course. However, it was still a resolution that would not be superseded until the current year. And so this brings us to the modern EVF of today's world, like the Sony a7R 4 the GFX100, the Panasonic S1 series of cameras, all sporting 5.76 million dot EVFs with very decent refresh rates, good contrast, a very usable interface for photographers. Are we spoiled today? Is there still room to grow? I think we are still at a state where we have to decide if we want maximum resolution or fast refresh rate, but the future is very bright my friends and I think we will reach a point very shortly where cameras have EVFs that can no longer be considered inferior to the optical viewfinder in every way. I personally feel that the electronic viewfinder is the greatest achievement in the mirrorless photography revolution, nay human history. Penicillin. Penicillin. Photographic history. Thank you so much for joining us on this midweek journey. Don't forget to check out our Twitter and our Instagram feeds. Please subscribe to our channel and leave your comments below. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to see you all, dear viewers, very soon. 
So Jordan, can I finish this whole history shtick? Is that cool now? Are we done?